D. Uh, we will have Elizabeth Leo, who is here. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. Uh, she's the project manager at Camp to Camp, the world leader of geospatial open source software. She has a surveyor background and she has been working in software dev since nearly 10 years now. And uh, Nils Osterling, he's a geologist. He works as geological data infrastructure coordinator. After the video, uh, the, this video, uh, Elizabeth will answer the question you have. Is it? Perfect. Yes. So we will start with the stream. Welcome to the presentation of SwissGeol.ch, the, the geological data on the web. SwissGeol.ch is a web application for geological data, which is publicly and freely available as a beta version since mid-2020. In the talk, I will present the project in more detail and give an insight in how such a project is created and how it develops, about the triggers for the creation, a short excursion to the technology, and then a small demo of the result. The presentation will be closed by an outlook, and of course, I'll, I'll be happy to answer your questions. So, first about what triggered the project. Actually, in the beginning, there was nothing. Well, actually, nearly nothing. Switzerland has actually a lot of geological data, but it is hard to get it. There is still a lot of paper-based data, and also digital data is often still processed and delivered manually. Not only the form of the data, but also the content can be a challenge here in Switzerland. The data is often covering only a small part of Switzerland and its quality can vary a lot. It can be uh, in one part of Switzerland very, very precise, in the other part very rough or even non-existing. Some data is sometimes only mapped to the ground or rel relative to the ground and the information is sometimes not located or not, not locatable in 3D. Based on this situation, the program NGM was started at Swistopo, and due to its high economic benefit, it, came to a, it became a so-called lighthouse project for the public administration. So there are uh, several project parts, or yeah, the, the National Geological Model Program is divided into four different projects. One is about uh, production of the data, the other one is about publication and visualization of the data, um, the third one is about cooperating and interoperability, and the last one is about uh, the uh, expansion of the existing infrastructure of the geological 3D models. We are uh, working for the project NGM Poop, so the, about the publication and the visualization of the project. The goal of, the, of uh, SwissGeol.ch is thus defined as making the data easily and ac easily accessible and available at any time without any cost or manual work to be done for the one who has to access it. So in the end, enterprises and public institutions shall use the data and thereby create an economic added value of about six to eight times higher than the costs of the project. So Swiss Geol is really covering the part of, of the NGM pop uh, project. On the technical side, a pre preliminary study of possible technologies was conducted in 2018 and it was found that an open source approach offers the most potential and flexibility. The maturity of the technologies, especially in the open source area, but also the new possibilities in the web world, especially regarding WebGL, 
opened the way to go towards open source web solutions, which were typically based on Cesium JS. So we started the project development in the end of 2019. The basis of the project uh, were already existing services, mainly of Map Geo Admin, which is the Swiss uh, cartographic uh, or map application um, publi published by, uh, by Swiss Topo, the Cartographic Institute of, of Switzerland. And uh, in this uh, Map Geo Admin project, there was already uh, quite some experience made with the 3D viewer. So they had, or they still have a 3D viewer and uh, also some data they publish in this 3D viewer. But now with the geology, we wanted to do one thing uh, more, one main thing, of course, before the 3D uh, or the current 3D viewer of Map Geo Admin is only covering uh, surface data or above the surface and now with geology we want to go on the ground and look what is in below the ground actually and uh, be able to visualize as many data as possible under the ground. The user should be free to navigate also on, on the ground and this in a similar way as we know it already from other 3D solutions like Google Earth for Cesium JS, so really a, a high usability standard. So going towards underground navigation was one of the main challenges of this project, along with uh, big data publication and missing standards. So for example, uh, we had, uh, we, or we still have, we are still in the way of defining geologic color schemes or uh, also how do we tile, how do we handle really big, large rock layers, uh, which are actually similar to, um, to terrain layers or terrain data. So there, there were and there are still some uh, quite big technological challenges and there are also and, and there were main usability channel challenges like uh, how do we make it ergonomic, how do we uh, communicate, how, how can the user go underground, how should it behave and uh, we were also uh, going to a very uh, strict user case focus. And of course uh, one of the main challenges for the usability was the performance. In order to make the, make the development and the user expectations converge as fast as possible we were sticking to a strict Agile Scrum framework over the entire implementation period. So we had really the technical part being in exchange very nearly with the product, project owner and uh, with the, finally with the, with the whole stakeholders around the projects. And um, we released uh, every two weeks actually a new version on production. So in the end, underground navigation capabilities were uh, thus uh, pushed to upstream Cesium JS and in collaboration with Cesium and around that a lot of data and geologic features have been implemented and passed through the and, and they all pass through the alpha testing phase with real users. After about seven months of development, Swiss Geol was born and the project in its beta state was released. So maybe just a quick uh, short word about what technology was behind it. You already heard it maybe a little bit. We use Cesium JS and we work together with Cesium also especially um, for the underground feature. So, this is something interesting because uh, even though Cesium JS did not cover the main feature for SwissGL, the underground navigation, it was clearly the best choice given the navigation easiness, the performance and the large support of different data. As you certainly know, a missing feature like underground is not a showstopper for open source uh, projects and in this open source world. 
either by funding a new feature or by contributing to an open source project, you can take influence on it and join the community. That's also what has been done in the case of Cesium and Swiss Geol. So we were really talking with Cesium, seeing what, what can we do to, to help them to, to get the underground down, done. Um, so the main component is Cesium JS, but there's also a lot of data which we integrated and treated. And for the treatment of the data, we had to use an um, a ETL product, a closed source licensed ETL project, a product called FME because the data formats were very, very diverse. We also integrated uh, the login capabilities for, uh, with a national AIM solution and added a lot of interfaces to other geological uh, applications or map portals here in Switzerland. With the process data and the web services used, we have more than 20 layers now available in SwissGeol and the data can be viewed in an easy and straightforward way for anyone who likes it. A large, a large part of the data can also be downloaded directly in SwissGeol in its original format and be used in specific geological uh, software. Now, after about, after about six months of development, the beta version was published on SwissGeol.ch. And since then, it has been continuously up, updated and improved. I'd like to give you a short uh, showcase or a short uh, tour around the different features uh, that, that are here and especially yeah, show you some of the main features. So you see, uh, you can look at the at, uh, Swiss Geol in a, in a 2D way just from, from top down to the to the to the earth but you can of course also tilt and see the mountains in a precise way so it's a two meters precision terrain and height model that has been integrated so from from the earth surface to underground you can flip over to the underground uh, place at the same place actually and look what how it looks like on the ground so you will discover a lot of more things like uh, cross sections boreholes but also like the the footprints of the buildings and also earthquakes uh, over the last 90 days or some bigger earthquakes uh, which are older you can also show different layers. So here you see from today to the ice age, for example, you can travel until up to the, back to the ice age and see how the, the earth looked like, um, especially the Alps during the ice age and see the whole uh, ice coverage. Uh, one interesting feature is also you can vary the transparency, especially from the terrain, but from, for any other layer as well. Um, so you can really explore and go, go have a look on the ground by staying over ground, but see what, what is there and what, uh, what can uh, be of interest to, to zoom in or to have a, a better glimpse. So here you see, uh, for example, in a, in a mountain valley, uh, you see the buildings, um, you see the mountains, but you also see uh, in red and blue, you see the, the train tunnels and the road tunnels. We have, of course, a lot of different data and you can kind of uh, combine it. So here you see lakes and rivers with the buildings, with some cross sections, with some seismic uh, transects, um, with different uh, geological layers coming in and um, then also the faults and some temperature models as well as some uh, surface geological map um, so you can really see and combine a lot of a lot of different data and get a, a really new insight about uh, what what you see and what can be uh, yeah where what the geolog geological situation might look like like at specific places. 
Um, you can also draw, draw lines, but not only you can use those lines to uh, generate cuts and have like this uh, a better understanding on, on, on different places. So for example, here I, I did a cut um, on a specific place uh, near to Neuchâtel. And uh, you can see, if you cut, you can see uh, maybe all the underground layers you switched on, here some uh, geological layers together with the folds. And you can not only just cut um, a specific place or just a, a, a simple cut, but you can also uh, generate block models, so kind of a box, uh, cutting with slicing and then interactively change the, the, the box sides uh, so really have some slicing and get some more insight of the data. Um, but maybe sometimes you would like to kind of not, not have your box model but get an insight from where you are so you can not only uh, slice a model but also uh, cut out a rectangular place and get insights and slice along uh, this codet. Um, so maybe you analyzed some place or you get, uh, you get an insight in some specific place. For example, here we have a borehole with the temperature um, points, the blue temperature points and the red uh, folds layer. And what you can do now is you can also annotate specific places. You can add images or website links in order to uh, kind of remember uh, what, what specific things or what findings you have found at, at those places. And yeah, so that's one part, but there's a lot, a lot more. Um, you can also explore it yourself. There is a lot more to, uh, to be uh, done and which is possible to do. We have extrusion of drawn uh, geometries. We have a really precise terrain. Maybe we'll even go one step further with the terrain one day. Uh, we have some navigation cube, keyboard navigation, like a little bit gaming style keyboard navigation. We have the buildings integrated, uh, we have multilingual features, search, drawing, and so on. KML upload. And there will be also more to come, of course. Um, yeah, but the main thing is it's uh, free to use and the whole code is open source. So uh, even better, except, yeah, instead of just watching this presentation, presentation, let's try it yourself, uh, get the link, go online and try it. Um, the code is also open source and can be forked and, and investigated and we would be happy to get into this discussion with you in case you are interested to use it or if you see that uh, it would be interesting in your region also to have such a tool. So I gave you an insight in the implementation of, of the SwissGerald project and the state we are today. SwissGerald fulfills the objective for an easy performant access to geological data and, has, and as an open source solution it has the potential to address diverse geological stakeholders and get them on board. At the moment we are still in beta phase so there will be a lot more coming in the future. Um, so this leads us to the future. We are planning to implement a brand new UI, UI based on the beta experience and uh, some uh, UI expertise. And then uh, we would also like to add a real voxel support with uh, yeah, volumetric pixels actually typically for the temperature model or also for other uh, attributive voxel uh, information. We also plan to add a lot of more uh, analysis function and of course more and more data. And as a long-term goal, Swiss Geol shall become a major tool for Swiss geologists and maybe also for the worldwide geology community. Maybe it will, there will be some kind of uh, community forming around the project, which 
which would be really interesting and, and a great plus value. So yeah, thanks a lot for your attention. And um, yeah, I'm the project manager at camp to camp a service, uh, uh, a geospatial service company um, at uh, here um, in Switzerland, but also over Europe. And we are providing services all over the world. And I would be happy to discuss about the project with you and also get your questions and inputs and uh, yeah. Thanks a lot for your attention. Hi, Elizabeth. Thank you uh, for your presentation. It's been really interesting for all of us. And we had a lot of interactions uh, through the chat and a lot of questions. So uh, we are going to, to start with the questions. Uh, okay. Okay, so great. The first one is, are you having any type pro with project like one geology loop geo SML? No, no, we don't have, I, I actually, I don't know them. So <laughs> I'm more from the, from the 3D uh, GIS world. Uh, Niels is more in the, in the geology. He can't attain or attend today, but um, no, I don't know them. So I will definitely check them out as well. Thanks. <laughs> okay. So we are going to the next one. Uh, what was the biggest challenge in this project? Big data, 3D tiles or what? Yeah, um, I think it's it's kind of around the big data. It's really one part is the big data. And it's also like geologists are used to very specific data for, formats, which are um, most of the time not web compatible or not made for the web world. And on the other hand side, it's really um, the, the usability. So people um, are maybe used to Google Earth or to their specific geology tools, but they all have different 3D navigation possibilities. So uh, to kind of catch, catch the geologist users, it's, um, it's uh, one of the biggest challenge, I think, in this project. Thank you. Uh, the next one. Uh, do you have any needs about implementing IoT and digital twins? What will be the purpose of these technologies in the context of geology service to the community? Yeah, so definitely. So the let's say the the, the users of, of Swiss Geol in, in the Swiss context, let's say, let's say they are definitely interested to for example, for construction work or things like that, they want to kind of um, show their digital, digital twin, twin in in the context of the geology. Um, so uh, this is definitely very important also for tunnel constructions uh, to kind of combine it really with the geologic layers. And the other thing is uh, for IoT, we already have something like that. Actually, actually, uh, we are using we are kind of trying to branch on the different services which collect data from IoT. Like uh, typically, we have the earthquakes in Swiss Geo currently, and um, they are actually taken from a web from a service uh, which is the earthquake monitor in Switzerland. So it's uh, up to date uh, for Perfect. each day, actually. Yeah. Thank you. So the next one, uh, what software 3D method do you use to draw geologic profiles? Um, this would be a question to Niels, but he's not here. Um, actually, all those data are pre-prepared uh, before. And um, sometimes even they are prepared by, uh, by companies uh, who collect the data and so on, or by Swistopo. So I don't really know in detail what they I don't know sorry <laughs> <laughs> okay don't worry so the next one is do you automate your data processing if you if so what tool do you use yeah so um, a part of it is automated so we typically have uh, some services we kind of uh, take the data from and we 
uh, process them each day automatically with some GitHub actions. <laughs> so um, this is kind of really a, it was an interesting solution to to use um, for this kind of data. And then we have some other data. We we process them manually with an FME with this FME uh, processing. Um, so this is still manual. And then there are other services which are actually processed for the 2D part at Swistopo with uh, Bash scripts and so on with a whole server infrastructure. Perfect. Thank you. The next one, uh, Alex commented in the chat. The chat. Uh, I wonder if this could be useful with other utility layers for using a copied place. Yeah. So, for example, yeah, like. I'm I'm not completely sure if I understand the question, but I guess it's like uh, yeah, in in cities you have a lot of of uh, of drainage uh, tubes and water tubes and 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 electricity internet cables going on in the in the earth, and st that's definitely one of the things which is uh, useful here because. We know a lot what's happening overground. We know who has constructed what house at which, which height and so on. But on the ground, the world is a lot less clear, and it gets, uh, yeah, we, we don't. We have with every year we have less space on the ground because everybody tries to put something in. <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely one of the goals why why this project was actually uh, launched. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. The next one, how is geologic layer information stored? Raster meshes something else. Do you record only tops or tops and bottoms of a layer? Um, so at the moment we have, uh, we are um, like, especially for the geologic layers, we are working with tins, which we uh, transfer to 3D tiles, but yeah, it's actually it's surfaces. So it's, uh, um, triangular surfaces and um, we have for the we have like point clouds which is now like the let's say the compromise to show some some volumetric data because we don't yet have voxels but we would like them um, so we have the the yeah the point clouds for that and um, and yeah, so some other like objects and so on. So uh, there's a lot with with three D tiles finally, which are allowed to do a lot of stuff. And we, I think uh, we we are mainly showing uh, tops of the layers. Uh, you maybe you have to check in the layer tree in the in the data catalog what is available. But we choose that to, just to kind of avoid having double uh, double layers at one single place <laughs> <laughs> perfect <Yeah. clears throat> uh, the other one is can subjections of geological layers be exporters for re reuse like 3d pr printing yeah um some i don't i'm not sure if the, yeah some subsections can be um let's say if you do them on the fly you cannot export them yet it's a goal later on um you can use an external tool to create a pdf of the subsection currently in swissgeol um but there is a lot some layers or quite some layers have uh, the possibility to download the initial data so the, the raw data you can get it and then kind of really treat it and do your your own fun stuff with with anything uh, okay with perfect data. We we will do another question and then because we are uh, uh, out of time, uh, so we are going to to do another question and then the audience please contact directly through Benules or or your or your email. So the next one is what kind of of cost does the project generate for session law ion? Um, not yet a lot because we don't have a lot of users yet and the main data is hosted at Swistopo. So like the really uh, data consuming parts are hosted at Swiss, Swiss uh, Topo and we have, uh, yeah, we have some kind of intermediate plan or something with Cesium Mayan. 
So, okay. Yeah. Okay, Elizabeth, thank you so much for your presentation. And I, I Thanks. please to, uh, to the audience contact directly to another questions. And um, we are going to the another, the last one for the morning session.